Alrighty, so today we're going to go through the most anticipated films of 2023. We're nearing the end of the year. There are a bunch of films coming out, virtually all of them sequels or remakes, but we are going to talk about which films you should go see and which ones you shouldn't. We're going to use a new matrix. It is what we call the woke good matrix when it comes to film. We're going to go through all that in just a moment. This is sponsored by Birch Gold. So you have on the Y axis the wokeness, and on the, on the x-axis is how good the film is. Even though we're starting the actual axes at, at zero, Hollywood doesn't make anything but like a three now on the woke axis, but you know, for purposes of mathematical accuracy, we'll keep the zero point where it is. Okay, so we're gonna start with the no-go zone. The no-go zone is all this stuff. And the no-go zone is anything that is below like a five on the good axis. You're just not gonna wanna see it. And if you end up like in this area, like the really high, like you're close to a 10, and that's like the super no-go zone, right? That's, that's all this stuff. Everything over here, this like super no-go zone, that's like gutsy. <laughs> or like Harry and Meghan. And then you have the danger zone, where Hollywood makes a, a movie that's just good enough to see, but also just woke enough that they feel really, really good about themselves. Um, I would say maybe the new Avatar is going to be in this particular category. Pocahontas 2, The Journey Home or whatever. And then you have the vicarious fun zone, okay? This is the below a six or seven on the woke axis and below a six or seven on the good axis. These are movies that probably aren't worth two hours of your time, but like it's a really boring Saturday night. Maybe you go to the theater, maybe you don't, or maybe you just watch the trailer or watch the online reviews. Then you have over here a few different categories. The dating zone is gonna be the stuff that is worth watching, but probably on the streaming services only. It's gonna be like the Apple TV stuff that is really, really high quality, but also super woke. Then you have the wife zone, okay? This is the stuff where you're actually gonna go and you're gonna watch it in the theaters. Hollywood makes almost none of these. And then finally, you have classics. Okay, these are essentially unicorns. They don't exist in 2023. We haven't had any of these in the last decade, essentially. Okay, so let's take a look at our options when it comes to the movies this year. So I will admit that when I first saw John Wick, I didn't get it. And then I watched it the second time and I really liked it. And now I really enjoy John Wick like a lot. So the chances that I'm actually going to watch this film in the theaters are very, very high. I took my wife to see this film, the last film in the theaters. So we'll put John Wick actually in the wife zone, like something that I absolutely will see in the theaters. Keanu Reeves is phenomenal. I'm going to need a gun. The movies get more and more absurd. They're really enjoying The action sequences demand to be seen in the theater. So that one will go there. Hunger Games, the ballad of songbirds and snakes. So the woke factor here is that they've cast Hunter Schaefer, the star of Euphoria, who is a trans girl, I believe, uh, meaning a boy. Uh, they've cast him as, I think, a her. I, I don't know the character. In, in, but also, this is sort of a, a weird prequel because it's a prequel about the rise of Snow, who's the bad guy in the Hunger Games trilogy. The colors are lovely, of course. But nothing says perfection like white. Don't Jennifer Lawrence is not in this one, despite the fact that she says that she is the first female-centered movie in Hollywood history, which comes to shock to literally all of Hollywood history. I remember when I was doing Hunger Games, nobody had ever put a woman in the lead of an action movie. Yeah. And, I mean, I guess she's never seen a movie before. It's weird. But anyway, um, she uh, she's not in it, so it's weird that her picture is not. But in any case, uh, this uh, this... Hunger Games Ballad of Songbirds and, and Snakes thing. Um, I'm gonna, hmm, hmm. 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 Oh. You probably, I'm not into it. I, I say I'm gonna maybe watch the trailer, but that's about it. Do what I gotta do. Some of my methods, you might disagree with me. These are family ties. I recognize mine. I know that they need me. Creed 3. So I will say that I, I sort of enjoyed Creed 1. I didn't like Creed 2 very much. Creed 3, presumably this is going to be about, what, Mr. T's son? Is that is that the premise? I think that's the premise. Um, and uh, so we're now just going through all of the bad guys that Rocky fought, but we're making their kids 
fight Apollo Creed's son. Kind of boring. I think the scripts are not particularly good, actually. I think these are overrated films. And so uh, I'm going to put this in the Vicarious Fun Zone as well. It's just sneaking in there. It might be in the no-go zone. Prediction? Yes, prediction. Pain. You miss the old life. Do you? Every day. Fast X. I think you just have to be a person who likes Fast and Furious to really enjoy the Fast and Furious movies. I'm not one of those people. And so this one just goes straight in the no-go zone for me. I've never liked a Fast and Furious movie. I find them all interminable. Uh, it's difficult for me to watch them, frankly. So not into it. This is only the beginning. We have Dune Part 2. I made the mistake of not watching Dune Part 1 in theaters. I should have watched it in theaters because it's overwhelming, like, on your cell phone. Such a sadness that you think you've seen a film on your f***ing telephone. I'm really looking forward to this. I thought Dune Part 1 was fabulous. I think Denis Villeneuve is a fantastic director. My name is Denis Villeneuve. Denis Villeneuve. Denis Villeneuve. Denis Villeneuve. I think the cast does a, a uniformly excellent job in the first movie. So this one actually goes in the wife zone. It may end up in the classics, actually. Are you not... I'm going to predict it ends up in the classic zone. And the reason I say that is because it has source material, right? Because it is based on a book. They can't stray that far from the book. And the book doesn't include a lot of the kind of crazy woke stuff that you would see now. You're not going to see like a random transgender relationship in the middle of Dune 2. That'd be super weird. Stand down. I'm not the one to fear, Prime. There is a darkness coming. And if you don't know, that you know. Transformers, Rise of the Beast, or whatever. Again, I, this one is just like Fast X, like, bonk. Not gonna, not, not interested, not remotely interested. Okay. Who do you think you are, really? We are supposed to be the good guys. We are. Into the Spider-Verse. The first one is great. I think it's the best animated film of the last 20 years. It's so good. The, the, the last Into the Spider-Verse is creative and interesting. And so I'm looking forward to it. I'm, you know, slightly, I'd say I'm, I'm slightly more skeptical of it than, than, than Dune 2. I'll put this in the wipes and I'll probably go see that in the theaters. Again, it was really, it was really I mean, honestly, a lot of these movies don't look bad. We'll get to the ones that look really bad in a second. destroy themselves. They made him the most important man who ever lived. The man who moved the earth. Oppenheimer. I am a Christopher Nolan fanboy, as everybody knows. It'll be interesting to see what he does with an actual biopic because this is something he's never really done before. He's done smaller dramas, like Prestige is a smaller drama. You're familiar with the phrase Man's reach exceeds his grasp. And I love prestige, it's great. Um, but he's always using tricks, right? He's playing tricks with time. He's playing tricks with time. And so it'll be interesting to see what he does with Oppenheimer. I also like Killian Murphy. I'm a big fan of Killian Murphy. I think he's a really good actor. I'm gonna say that, again, I, I always preliminarily just put whatever Nolan does in the classic section. So that's two classics maybe this year. So I'm, I'm excited about that. Okay, fine. Bowser is coming. are going to stop that monster. Super Mario Brothers, the movie. <laughs> There's all this controversy over Chris Pratt. I, I don't understand what people want. Do they want Chris Pratt to put on like a weird Italian, what do you want, Roberto Benigni to play him? This is a, a moment uh, of joy, and I want to kiss everybody because you are the image of the joy. They're like, why was Chris Pratt playing it? I don't know. Well, because you don't want a guy going, hey, Mario, what's going on? Like, <laughs> it'd be so stupid. It's -a me, Mario. <laughs> Apparently, they make, because they have to, Princess Peach, the hero of the film. You knew that was coming? They couldn't just allow it to be what the actual video game is, where Princess Peach is the thing that you're saving, right? Now, Princess Peach has to be the kick ass woman, female hero. <laughs> 
Yeah, no. We'll get to more of our movie rundown in just one second. First, will the lack of a red wave during the midterms lead to more reckless spending by a more emboldened administration? We're talking higher taxes, deeper inflation. The recession seems to be on the way. If you're unsure how the next couple of years are going to unfold, you should talk to my friends over at Birch Gold Group about protecting your savings with gold. Birch Gold makes it easy to convert your IRA or 401k into an IRA in precious metals so you can own gold and silver in a tax-sheltered account. Gold is the world's oldest, most proven form of currency. When inflation soars and all the other assets go sideways, gold is always there. This month, you can get a free gold back with every $5,000 purchase when you convert an existing IRA or 401k into a precious metals IRA with Birch Gold by December 22nd. When you're ready to diversify at least a little bit, text Ben to 989898, claim your free information kit on gold, and then talk to one of their precious metals specialists. With every purchase you make before December 22nd, you get that free gold back. It's a great stocking stuffer just in time for Christmas. Text Ben to 989898. Protect yourself with gold today. I don't know what this film is. <laughs> so it's I understand that it's a legacy property, but it's a legacy toy for little girls. That's what it is. My little girls like Barbies. Mattel presumably gave its license so that they can make a movie with Ryan Gosling and with, uh, and with Margot Robbie on this. But that means it's going to be adult-oriented. And Ryan Gosling and, and Margot Robbie are not, this is not gonna, a movie for kids who are under 13, probably. It's gotta be PG-13 or R. It's kind of like in that bad Santa category where you're kind of marketing to teenagers and you're... <clears throat> I think that there's a possibility it actually ends up in the danger zone, this one. Um, but again, this is all predictions. I don't know anything about these films. The Little Mermaid. They're doing the face tattoo syndrome here with the casting. There's no question they're doing that, right? You walk into a Starbucks, there's a dude with a giant face tattoo, desperate for attention. And you're like, man, cool tattoo. And he's like, why are you even looking at my face? Like, because you're wearing a face tattoo. Okay, this is what Hollywood is doing with the casting in Little Mermaid. The mythology of The Little Mermaid comes from the Nordic regions of the world. And so you deliberately cast a person who is not from that region of the world uh, in order to essentially draw trolls, right? I mean, that's, that's the idea here, is that anybody who mentions this, why are you noticing the face tattoo? Why are you noticing? Why are you noticing? So they're going to do this crap. Disney's been doing this crap with a lot of their remakes, right? They did this with Beauty and the Beast also. They're like, oh, what if we have just have a, LeFou is gay now. LeFou in the original Beauty and the Beast is not gay. The whole point of him is that he's a sycophantic idiot. Okay, anyway, this is what Disney does now in order to draw fire, which is why Disney is failing. Uh, we can put this, you know, it's like right on the border between... Vicarious Fun Zone and Danger Zone. Indiana Jones and the Duck of Death. Sorry, and the Dial of Destiny. My bad. So, um, why? That's my question is why. So I, I love the original indie, right? The, one of the great scores of all times. The, the, the original Raiders of the Lost Ark is maybe the best action film ever. The Last Crusade is also a terrific action film, the one with, with Sean Connery. It's great. There are a couple of reasons why indie movies fail. Reason number one is a technical reason, and reason number two is a message reason. Reason number one, the technical reason is because if you actually watch the original Indiana Jones and Raiders of the Lost Ark, all of the stunts are amazing. The stunts are incredible. There is no CGI because CGI was not available. And so that means you actually have a stuntman who's riding underneath a car that is driving over the pavement and coming out the back end of the car, climbing back around the side of the truck, punching his way in, right? Like, that's amazing stuff. They don't do that anymore. So if you even watch the preview for the new indie, it's all CGI, which... It sucks. Like, why do I want to watch it CGI? That's dumb. And it doesn't look real. It looks fake. It looks like Guardians of the Galaxy or something. I'm not, not interested in that. So that, that's the technical reason, number one. Then there's the message reason. The reason Raiders works, the reason that, that Last Crusade works, is because they take very seriously the mythology of the religions that they're portraying. The Temple of Doom doesn't work because, first of all, I don't even know what that religion is. Uh, and second of all, I'm not sure how you would take the mythology of it seriously. They're literally ripping, beating hearts out of people's chests. So it's, it's weird. Four has nothing to do with any sort of religious alternative at all. It's just a weird thing about aliens and a crystal skull that nobody understands. And this one, the Dial of Destiny, it just looks like they're looking for an excuse to use some de-aging technology on Harrison Ford, frankly. Um, and I will say that in the preview, the de-aging technology looks fairly good, at least better than Robert De Niro kicking the crap out of somebody in The Irishman, but looking like he's 80 years old while, while he's doing it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, 
this looks like a fail to me. It looks like a dramatic fail to me. So uh, I'm going to put this, like again, right on the border between vicarious fun zone and the no-go zone. Ant-Man and the Wasp. I liked the first Ant-Man. I have not seen any of the subsequent Ant-Men. Um, Ant-Mans. I don't, I don't know. Uh, it's in any case. Uh, me. It's it's kind of a throwaway character. I'm, I've never been a huge fan of the MCU. This is like a throwaway character in a throwaway series, which is the MCU. So again, this one, we'll, we'll put this one in like the vicarious fun zone. I just don't. Me. I like Paul Rudd. All right. Everybody likes Paul Rudd. Roosevelt. Okay. I'll admit, I'm interested. I'm interested because. Teddy Roosevelt is a wild and fascinating character. Teddy Roosevelt was an American hero in the, in the storming of San Juan Hill. He became a president. He was a good foreign policy president, I think a very bad domestic policy president. He then proceeded to blow up the, the future of the country by essentially getting Woodrow Wilson elected in 1912 by running against William Howard Taft. I don't know what period of his career this covers. I'm interested in this largely because it's actually gonna be an original movie. Scorsese is a director who's grown on me over time. I used to think he was wildly overrated. Now I think he's kind of mildly overrated. The movies that I like from Scorsese are the ones everybody else hates. So I actually really like Silence. I think Silence is his best film, by far. Uh, I'm, I'm not as big a fan of Goodfellas as everybody else is. I like Silence a lot. Um, he takes seriously some of the moral qualms with regard to religion in Silence. That no anyway, Roosevelt, I don't know what it's gonna be. I, I, I don't know that Leonardo DiCaprio can play Roosevelt. That seems weird to me. Like, I think that the last time he played a historical character like this, he was J. Edgar, and I thought that he was just Leonardo DiCaprio playing J. Edgar Hoover. Um, here, uh, you know, maybe. Not, I, I'm, not, I'm not as big a, a Leonardo DiCaprio fan as everybody else. I'll put this maybe in the, like, the border between the vicarious fun zone and I don't know how woke it's going to be. That's, that's the question. Also, you don't know, like, what angle they're going to take. But Scorsese doesn't tend to be super duper. I'm putting him like right on the border between vicarious. Like, is it a trailer or is it something that you watch in in the theaters? I, I don't know the answer to that. Okay, finally, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Again, like everybody loves these this series. I watched the first one. It was fun. It's okay. I watched the second one. It was terrible. And uh, and this one, I guess James Gunn is back, but James Gunn's brand of humor has tired me and bored me. Uh, James Gunn has one joke and he just keeps telling it over and over and over and over. It's like, what if I just blow up stuff and shock you with like the guts that I'm showing? Or what if I say, like make a really shocking joke? Or what if I say something super provocative? It's all shock humor. It's, kind of, it's almost like shock horror slash humor. I'm, I'm, I'm tired, I'm tired. This one is like right, again, like Indy. I'm gonna put this one on the border of the vicarious fun zone and the no-go zone. So that is where you end up. Uh, honestly, like even Barbie in the danger zone, we'll see how woke it is. The, the, the big budget blockbuster, they tend not to go quite as woke as they otherwise normally would. The reason being because they're afraid they're gonna drive people away. But not an amazing number of great movies. There's like basically four movies that I'm interested in seeing this year in the theaters. I guarantee you I'm not going to see any of these others in the theaters. None, like none of them. John Wick is my, my guilty pleasure. So John Wick 4 in the White Zone. Right, and then two possible classics. We'll see about Dune 2. I'm going to say that's almost a dead set lock because I thought part one was a classic. So if he does anything similar in part two, it'll be fantastic. And Oppenheimer, again, the question is going to be whether it's here or whether it's here. Okay, so there is your 2023 movie preview. We'll see how he did when these movies actually come out. 